4.3 number 7 has given you a function here, y equals e to the negative 2x. They've given you an interval here from 0 to 3, and they want you to find a value c uh, for which this function here is going to satisfy the mean value theorem. So uh, the mean value theorem only applies if a function is continuous and differentiable on a closed interval, and then y equals e to the negative 2x. Hopefully we know what that one looks like, guys. Exponential function, but it's being flipped because of the negative, and it's a little steeper than normal, so it looks a little something like that. So anyhow, that's what that graph looks like. And yeah, from zero to three, from here to here, it looks like that function's fully differentiable. I don't think they'd give us this question if it didn't satisfy the hypothesis. So the formula for the mean value theorem, hopefully we've got this down, is that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. It is essentially saying that the slope of a tangent line to this curve uh, somewhere on that interval is going to equal the slope of your secant line over here on the right defined by the two endpoints. So, oops, that was ugly. All right, so what we're going to do is this. We're going to work on finding our derivative over here on the left, and at the same time, we're going to replace that x with a c. Not a big deal if you forget to do that. So the derivative of an exponential function is the same base, e, to the same power, which would be negative 2x, but since we're supposed to put a c in there, that's now going to become a negative 2c for the power, times the derivative of that exponent, which is a negative 2. So there's your derivative evaluated at this magical point c, and that should equal, all right, slope of the secant is going to come from over here on the right side, where we take 3 for our b value, 0 for our a value, and plug them back into the original function. So f of b means f of 3, that would be e to the negative 6th power, not a whole lot of fun, minus f of a, e to the 0 power is just going to be 1. All over b minus a, that would be 3 minus 0, which is just a 3 down here on the bottom. So that's the equation that we've set up now, here now, and the only variable we have is this c located up in the exponent. Remember, that right side, everything there is a constant. So trying to solve this thing for c, the first thing we want to do is isolate the e raised to that power, which means we have to get rid of that negative 2. So I'll divide both sides by negative 2, which of course is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over negative 2, and that will cancel with that, leaving us with an e to the negative 2c power is going to equal, can't do a whole lot with this on the top, guys, e to the negative 6th minus 1, and 3 times negative 2 gets us a negative 6 down there on the bottom bottom. Next thing we need to get rid of is the e, the base of this exponent, and we get rid of an e with a natural log of the both, uh, both sides of that equation. Now the natural log and the e cancel out, and then that negative 2c comes down to the base level. And as far as where we are right now, guys, that is certainly not a natural log I can evaluate by hand, so I'm just going to leave it as the natural log of this messy fraction, e to the negative 6th minus 1, all over negative 6, the last thing we have to do is to get rid of that negative 2 in front of our c value. And if we can do that, we're going to be all set. So we would divide everything by negative 2 and get c equals. And I tell you what, rather than make this a more complex expression than it is, I think I'll probably just multiply by negative 1 half and have a natural log then of e to the negative 6th minus 1 all over negative 6. Now guys, at this point, we've isolated the c, and I think we're fine with the way it's written right now. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, let's take a look at what they had, oop, 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 sorry about that, at what we had right over here. Um, I'm taking a look at the solutions manual right here, and either I goofed up or they goofed up. I'm looking at it here, guys. Yeah, their solution is wrong. I'm sorry, I'm looking at it right now. The interval, and it even says this in the solutions manual, is 0 minus 3. And they got the same numerator here that we got, e to the negative 6th minus 1. So I know that we're doing this one right, but in their denominator, they wrote the b minus a as a 3 minus 1 and got a 2 here instead of a 3. That is clearly not right. I, I don't know that I've noticed that mistake in the solutions manual before there. Okay, so their answer is incorrect, everybody, and I feel pretty good about where ours is. Now, the one thing I was going to say before I looked here is that it wouldn't shock me if maybe they had rewritten the solution just a little bit differently here as negative one-half 
times the natural log of, and what they might have done is changed the order in the numerator, which is basically the opposite, made that a, a positive one, minus e to the negative sixth, and then also changed the sign of the denominator and made that a positive six. That's a little bit nicer of a way to do it, but I would be fine with either one of these two answers here, guys, uh, to make that one correct. So the answer that they've got in the solutions manual, I believe is incorrect because they had that denominator of two and not a denominator of three, which we should have had. As soon as I shut this video off, I'm gonna do the problem on the calculator and see if I can verify that that's right, but I think we, uh, we have the right answer here for problem number seven.